Hi and welcome for a new update about this nano uh, budget tank. It was first my budget tank but then of course as you know in uh, some episodes ago we changed to a bigger tank and as you can see now a lot has changed to this tank. I have started building a little canopy and a cabinet with magnets. Uh, it is not finished yet on the sides there are is some room that left because there I'm going to place some uh, LED strips some LED lighting uh, for the future so the canopy I can open uh, why I made this because I don't want to have any jumper if I add some more fish and I wanted to add some T5s so the T5s it's a all DIY uh, thing I made I had this uh, jewel light from a, from a jewel uh, how you say cover T5s so I just cut it in two and uh, uh, rearranged the electrics uh, made them longer so I could split it and uh, that's how I made this fixture fixture I used some aluminium brackets to uh, be able to open and close it and I used an aluminium bracket uh, made it myself to hang the LED light on just something simple uh, and, and easy and it works um, the tank itself is doing good uh, but there are also some small issues um, you can see first that the anemone is gone uh, it is in the sump of my big tank together uh, with the Darwins, the clowns, the black and white Ocellaris clowns, the Darwins that I had in the previous uh, smaller tank. Um, and why? Because it, of course, with the much more light, it suddenly moved uh, and split it. Uh, so the baby I already sold to uh, a friend of mine. Uh, who really wanted to have one so and then the other one just for safety I took it out because of course uh, in this small tank uh, an anemone takes a lot of real estate <laughs> uh, and I wanted to do more with this tank I want to progress and learn more in the hobby and I want to show the viewers more about uh, how you can progress from a small budget tank where you have a lot of things that you need to yeah, think about and that you can't do uh, like in a big tank so that's so you can progress you know also costs you need to save money maybe uh, and this tank I think for me and for uh, beginners that are watching is uh, maybe good information information and for me it's a really good uh, learning tool <laughs> so the corals are doing good as you can see uh, the leathers they uh, they didn't have to adapt to the much more light they did really well uh, the, this, the Antelia the waving hands are doing great um, of course the SPS have benefit from much more light only the buttons I saw they had really uh, really needed to adapt to this uh, much more light it took a while for them to start opening again uh, some are just still struggling some are still struggling um, uh, I don't know if it's only due to the the light that there is much more light but also uh, I didn't measure uh, my uh, my water I, I didn't do uh, too many water tests actually because okay it was all going good and I, I had no algae problems or stuff and I was doing every week my water changes from uh, 10 liters so it's 10 percent of the tank um, I did every week my water changes uh, but um, now that I was adding more SPS, uh, like yeah, the Montiporas uh, and uh, Calendrium, I was thinking maybe I need to measure. So I measured and the first thing I saw was that nitrates 
and phosphates uh, weren't readable, weren't measurable. So there are none or really less uh, so nutrients. And I know that can be also a problem if uh, nitrates and phosphates are too low. So then I measured uh, alkalinity and then I think ah, alkalinity was 5.4. Uh, so that's actually really low. Uh, I think best for a tank like this, you, you are like between 6 and 8, you know. And the water, uh, the salt, I'm sorry, the salt I'm using, the aquaforest reef salt, uh, when you mix it, and I have measured it, it's always uh, around 7.8. So the alkalinity is 7.8. Uh, and when I did the water test, it was the day after I did a water change. So I did a 10% water change with salt water that was 7.8 alkalinity and the day after I measure in the tank 5.4 so I thought oh this is not good I need to do something about it because I would like to stay around the 7.8 especially because if I do water changes that there are not too much uh, differences so I have three bottles the from aquaforest I bought them, it's no sponsoring, but I like these products, it's uh, good in price, but also good products. Uh, I have the KH+, plus, the Calcium and Magnesium+. plus. So Magnesium was quite alright, it needed maybe a little bit more, but uh, Calcium was a little bit too low for me, I, it was 385, so 385, and I want to be around 410 or 420. Uh, with this tank and of course the alkalinity was only 5.4 so now with the KH KH plus I am trying uh, slowly to uh, dose every day a little bit to raise it and I'm now about at 6.5 uh, alkalinity and I want to go up to the 7.8 so I do it slowly and then I was thinking because I'm using this now to dose the tank manually it takes only one minute more in the evening when I'm uh, feeding the tank and everything to just dose a little bit uh, so and when I'm at that 7.8 uh, then I want to uh, then I'm not going to dose for 24 hours and then I want to measure the tank again and see how much it uses uh, in a day so in 24 hours so I can calculate how much I just need to use then uh, how much I need to use then I'm sorry but my memory card was full from the camera so that's why this little glitch so yeah how much uh, that I have to dose then a day it will probably be uh, not much I guess my guess is like maybe one mil or <coughs> or for, yeah something like that for now so and because I am doing water changes, uh, I don't need to. I'm I'm not feeling like I have to do some balling method with uh, with a dosing pump, or I need to have a calcium reactor because yeah, for the small tank, you know, it's not necessary. And like uh, from the beginning of this series, I want to keep the tank as simple as possible, but I want to. Uh, progress with this tank and, uh, and and learn from it you know for me it's also a good learning tool uh, a smaller tank and uh, to learn how to keep the uh, parameters in check <coughs> uh, in balance so uh, and then I was thinking because of the nutrients are so low <laughs> my skimmer is my protein skimmer is actually too uh, big for this tank so or take off this skimmer and place a small one or take off the skimmer offline in uh, just total and and look how it does without a skimmer or uh, I try I will try to do uh, a water change every two weeks instead of one week so what is your opinion? What are, are your opinions about it? Um, I am going to do my thing to keep the nutri uh, to keep the the 
water parameters in check but what do you think what do you advise for me to do about my uh, nutrients I don't want to start dosing uh, phosphates or or uh, nitrates I uh, want to yeah bring them up uh, feeding more I don't know you know I have just two fish and uh, two crab and one uh, shrimp and a, a bunch of snails are in here so I have a really nice cleanup crew too good maybe so but uh, yeah what do you advise am I going to do every two weeks a water change or do I take the skimmer off and see what happens the skimmer offline or maybe just only in the nights uh, during night time the skimmer offline or a small skimmer uh, maybe I was thinking skimmer offline and only a refugium in the space where I have the skimmer now then I can make a refugium there so yeah can you help me uh, I need some advice about it how do I gonna raise this uh, nutrients problem so oh yeah, one more thing I added to the tank was a an ATO a simple one simple smart ATO uh, yeah it doesn't cost uh, much uh, less or it's not so much cheaper than like Tunzi uh, Nano but it's working good it's working easy you know it's just one magnet uh, it comes in the box with everything so the the ATO the, the magnet uh, the holder for the tube the tubing and uh, small pump everything is included in the box only the the holder is not so yeah I, not so strong I think because you know it it broke and I didn't had it to uh, I didn't tighten it that uh, much because I just could slide it over the glass you know if I needed to do something on the skimmer I could slide it uh, so anyway but it broke and what happened was that the tube uh, because it, it uh, broke and fell down the tube came into the water of the sump and because of my ATO reservoir uh, the water level was higher than the level of the sump so the moment the I think it happened like that the moment the ATO jumped on started pumping water stopped pumping but of course the hose was or the tube was in the water from the sump it uh, leveled out you know so it pulled out all the uh, uh, the, the uh, osmosis osmosis water or RODI water uh, <laughs> Ooh, difficult words man so it pulled out all the water from the RO uh, compartment until the level was the same because I in the morning I hear the alarm uh, it, uh, the ATO gave an alarm so I open it and I saw that the level the water level was too high in the sump and then I think what happened and immediately I saw the tube from the ATO in the water from the sump and I saw that the, the level from the ATO reservoir was the same like the sump so I knew okay it had pulled out like two or three liters of water so how did I fix it I used uh, the coral glue that I used to glue the the bracket and that worked it's 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 fine now again so and then I took out uh, water from this tank uh, until it was under the level that I normally keep in the sump and I poured it into the big tank and then I took water from the big tank uh, and I filled the sump again until the level that I wanted you know uh, if I did good by that I don't know because yeah you know the the my my thoughts was okay uh, there is a lot of uh, water in there so uh, my parameters probably went down you know salinity and, and everything went down because of two three uh, liters RO water went into this tank so I think yeah maybe I can balance it out again if I pour some of the water in the big tank uh, the bigger tank is not going to have so much swings because of that and I take out some water uh, and put it in here to keep the salinity 
uh, to bring it back a little bit. Uh, so I measured it and the salinity was fine. Uh, I'm using the same salt in the big tank as uh, in the small tank and I'm trying to keep the, the parameters quite the same. So it's easy if I want to put something over like corals and stuff or doing maintenance, it's, it's easy. So yeah, that's all the changes, lights. Uh, so if you have some advice for me, um, maybe the lights because it's, it's really much brighter now and the corals are adapting but I was thinking maybe doing some DIY uh, so I can dim the T5s back and they have been uh, burning for 100 hours now or you, how you say that they have been uh, lighted for uh, more than 100 hours so I'm able to to dim the T5s, the ATs, I think. So if I could make something to maybe adjust the light a little bit, but yeah, we will see. Uh, so if you have some advice about the nutrients, how to bring it up, skimmerless or, or just only a refugium, or uh, yeah, tell me in the comment section below. I want to thank you for watching me and listening to me, and I hope you enjoyed this video. If you aren't subscribed yet, please don't forget to subscribe if you want to follow me, and the notification bell and blah, blah, blah. Uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, I only hope you enjoy it and yeah, thank you for watching and hope to see you soon again. Bye bye.